what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and me and my normal camera we going through some things um until we can get our relationship back on track i'm recording this video on my phone just to go ahead and get a video out to you guys but what i'm about to show you is a preview of a really dope interview i did with an artist by the name of lee low key he has over 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, monthly listeners, not just one song that popped randomly. And it's been like that for some time. But what he's talking about specifically in this preview, I'll show you, is the value of the experimental phase he took in his artistry and the effect that it took after that. So I really think it's valuable for you guys. And go ahead and check it out. But for me, the creation of that project was seeing or was trying to do things seriously for so long and then not working. And watching how things were changing on the internet, like Soldier Boy, then Lil B, then Riff Raff. And for a long time, like I just kind of saw where that trajectory was headed, where rappers were getting more and more obscure in their appearance and the way they acted. And the rate of content release had to be so much quicker because everybody was able to do it. And I yeah. thought if we look a couple years in the future, I think this SoundCloud wave is going to be a big thing. This is where mostly the next artists are coming out of. Yeah. It was. Um, and... And there were a lot of interesting sounds within that, that like the coolest thing about the SoundCloud scene early on was that it was music that wasn't trying to sound like Drake or wasn't trying to sound <laughs> yeah. professionally polished or just like yeah. commercial in any way. They were just unrelentlessly themselves. And yeah. there, was, there was an energy ab around that scene. And I thought, okay, if I can be the weirdest member of that scene and just work with every single person I possibly can, release music, <laughs> every single day in the form of like, it was typically albums a day. I think I made in two years, I made probably 3000 songs mm -hmm. and had them out on, on the internet. Um, and I would, I freestyled everything like without even hearing the beat most times. Um, one of my like golden rules was I could not say no to a project if somebody sent beats mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and like you were saying that expanded my, my level of comfort so much when I, got away from that because yeah. I had never freestyled songs before. I'm not even that much of a freestyler, like just okay. in, in parties or anything. I'm, I'm a very eccentric writer, like making sure every word is perfect, yeah. but having coming away from that period of two years where that's all I did, I was able to have much more freedom in the way I thought, like when I heard a song in, in constructing hooks or um, yeah, just the structure of songs and making things less rigid. Dope. And I was, I was less rigid in, in everything that I did marketing and all that too. Nice. So, yeah, I was interested on how in how that affected you going forward. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, I would not be here without that. Dope. So that that exper those experimental phases are so important, and I hear so many artists these days. Um, I might talk to that you might be fourteen, right? Um, you might have been rapping for some years. It might be like twenty, but still, like there's so much experimentation left to do, and just trying to pop on that first sound of yours, and when it's not really developed. I think um, an artist skips so much into going straight to promo and get seen by as many as people as possible. I think it robs an artist of what they actually could become. You know? Oh, a hundred percent. And like my whole mentality is, and this wasn't exactly why I was doing what I was doing while I was right. making these radical changes in my approach, yeah. but you have to fail a million times early on doing the craziest thing that you can yeah. a million times, because if you, get picked up on your first sound that you come up with and you get put on the scene. If you, if that ever gets boring to you as an artist and you want to make a change, you don't know how to, and you're not in the place where that's a viable business solution. Like mm -hmm. if you have success based off your first sound, by the point you want to make a change, you got a million people around you telling you, no, nah, you can't do that. Now you're locked into this. <laughs> oh, then people will tell you and they will tell you loud. And that, yeah, and that, that like, that takes away everything of oh, yeah. why one would become an artist because you're suddenly just working for everybody that was working for you when you started. Now, I hope that was super helpful for you guys. Of course, I've always talked about the value of actually experimenting and not skipping the experimental phase. Definitely glad for you guys to be able to see that from an artist who's finding success themselves. And the full interview will be coming in about a week or so. Lilo Key will be dropping gems on how he built his listener base on Spotify, how he got connections with people at VaynerMedia and just start to build his own business on the side to be able to fund his life as an artist. A lot of things that's valuable for you guys. But in the meantime, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.